Albert Einstein once said, when I read the Bhagavad Gita and reflect about how God created this universe, everything else seems so superfluous. A statement as thought-provoking as this deserves a deeper dive, don't you think? So here we are, delving into the mind of one of the greatest scientific luminaries of our time, exploring the profound impact a religious text had on his worldview. Einstein, a man synonymous with the theory of relativity, an icon of theoretical physics, found himself captivated by the Bhagavad Gita. This ancient Hindu text, a 700-verse epic, is a conversation between Prince Arjuna and the god Krishna, who serves as his charioteer. It is a spiritual masterpiece, a guide to life in the universe, filled with timeless wisdom about duty, righteousness, and the nature of reality. In the Bhagavad Gita, Einstein found a perspective of the universe that complemented and in some ways transcended his scientific understanding. He was a man of science, yes, but Einstein was also a man of deep philosophical thought. He believed in Spinoza's God, a deity not of religion, but of the harmony and orderliness of the universe. And so the Bhagavad Gita, with its profound insights into the nature of existence, resonated with him. It offered a metaphysical perspective, a spiritual lens through which to view the cosmos that was not at odds with his scientific beliefs, but rather enhanced them. It provided him with a sense of wonder, a reverence for the universe that went beyond equations and theories. This is the beauty of Einstein's quote. It's a testament to the fact that science and spirituality are not mutually exclusive, but rather they can coexist, complement, and even enrich each other. Einstein, with his brilliant mind, understood this. He saw the universe not just as a grand machine, but also as a divine masterpiece. Thus we see a bridge between the rational world of science and the metaphysical realm of spirituality. So, what does the Bhagavad Gita say about the creation of the universe? The Bhagavad Gita, revered as one of the sacred scriptures of Hinduism, offers a fascinating account of the universe's creation. It introduces us to the concept of a cyclical universe, one that is not linear but circular, going through repeated cycles of creation, sustenance, and dissolution. The Gita explains that the universe is born out of Prakriti, the eternal nature, impelled by Purusha, the eternal spirit. From this union, everything in the universe springs forth, but this process isn't a one-time event. The Gita posits that the universe undergoes cyclic processes known as yugas, epochs of time where creation, preservation, and dissolution happen in a perpetual cycle. This view of the universe, so ancient in its origin, might seem at odds with the scientific understanding. But it's not. The idea of a cyclical universe is not incompatible with some modern scientific theories. One such theory is the Big Bounce Hypothesis, a cosmological model that suggests our universe is one phase in an infinite sequence of self-contained universes. In essence, the Gita's cyclical universe suggests an eternal dance of creation and destruction, a cosmic ballet guided by divine forces. It's a view that doesn't just accommodate the birth and death of stars and galaxies, but also the rise and fall of civilizations and the ebb and flow of human lives. The Bhagavad Gita's metaphysical perspectives on the universe's creation offer not just a spiritual viewpoint, but a philosophical perspective on existence. It's a perspective that encourages us to look beyond the material to see the universe not just as a physical entity but as a manifestation of divine energy. Therefore, Einstein's reflection on the Gita's view of the universe reveals a contemplative side of the scientist. It shows that he was not just a man of science but also a man of deep philosophical and spiritual insight, someone who saw the universe not just in equations and theories but in the profound wisdom of the Bhagavad Gita. But what did Einstein mean by everything else seems so superfluous? To delve into this, let's first understand the term superfluous. It refers to something that is unnecessary, more than enough, or in excess. So when Einstein says everything else seems so superfluous, he implies that compared to the grandeur and the mysteries of the universe, all other human concerns appear insignificant or unnecessary. Imagine standing on the edge of a vast ocean staring into the infinite expanse of water. The problems, worries, and desires that occupy your daily life suddenly seem minuscule, don't they? they are dwarfed by the enormity of what lies before you. This is the sentiment Einstein echoed in his statement. The universe, in its infinite complexity, makes our worldly concerns seem trivial. The pursuit of wealth, power, fame, these are all transient, they are not the true essence of life. 
They are, in Einstein's words, superfluous. But let's not mistake Einstein's words as a call for asceticism or a rejection of worldly life. No, Einstein was not advocating for a retreat from the world. Instead, he was emphasizing the importance of knowledge, understanding, and curiosity. In his view, the true purpose of human life was not in the accumulation of material possessions, but in the quest for understanding the universe. This pursuit, this insatiable thirst for knowledge, was what Einstein deemed truly important. Einstein, despite being a scientist, was deeply philosophical. He understood that the universe was not merely a collection of stars, planets, and galaxies. It represented the profound mysteries of existence, the secrets of life, and the ultimate truth. And so, he dedicated his life to unraveling these mysteries, to understanding the universe, its workings, and its laws. To him, this was the ultimate goal. This was the purpose of life. In Einstein's world, understanding the universe was the supreme goal, rendering all else superfluous. Einstein and the Bhagavad Gita, an unexpected pairing but one that opens up a fascinating conversation. At first glance, science and spirituality may seem like two opposing ends of a spectrum. Science, with its rigorous methods and empirical evidence, appears vastly different from spirituality, with its emphasis on faith and personal experiences. Yet, when we delve deeper, we find that both are driven by a similar quest. The quest to understand the universe and our place within it. Einstein's engagement with the Bhagavad Gita is a testament to this intersection. Here was a man, a scientific genius, who found wisdom and solace in a spiritual text. He saw beyond the apparent dichotomy, recognizing the common thread of curiosity, wonder, and the pursuit of truth that weaves through both domains. Science asks, what is the nature of the universe? How did it begin? What laws govern its functioning? Similarly, spirituality explores questions like, why are we here? What is our purpose? How should we live in this vast cosmos? While the methods may differ, the underlying desire to comprehend our existence remains the same. In many ways, spirituality and science are like two different languages, each with its own vocabulary and grammar, each describing the universe from its own unique perspective. Einstein, fluent in the language of physics, also found value in the dialect of spirituality. He knew that dismissing one in favor of the other would only limit our understanding of the universe. Einstein's quote serves as a reminder that the universe is far too complex and beautiful to be understood through a single lens. It's a call to embrace the richness that comes from multiple perspectives, to appreciate the depth and diversity of our collective knowledge. Einstein's quote reminds us that science and spirituality can coexist, each enriching our understanding of the universe in its own way. The intersection of science and spirituality is not a point of conflict, but a space for dialogue, growth, and mutual enrichment. It's a space where we can appreciate the universe in all its complexity, and perhaps find our own place within it. As we reflect on Einstein's words, what can we take away from them? Einstein, a man of science, found profound wisdom in the Bhagavad Gita, a spiritual text. This intermingling of science and spirituality in his reflections is a testament to the multidimensional nature of reality. It's a reminder that we can explore the universe through different lenses, each offering unique insights. Throughout this discussion, we've journeyed through Einstein's reverence for the Gita, pondered over the creation of the universe, and contemplated the superfluous nature of worldly pursuits. Einstein's quote, though brief, encapsulates these wide-ranging concepts, challenging us to view the world in a different light. In an era where science and spirituality often seem at odds, Einstein's reflections offer a harmonious perspective. They invite us to acknowledge the inherent mystery of the universe, a mystery that both science and spirituality seek to unravel. His words encourage us to maintain a sense of wonder and curiosity, to seek answers, but also to revel in the beauty of the unknown. This quote is not just about the creation of the universe or the teachings of the Bhagavad Gita. It's about the value of perspective, the importance of curiosity, and the courage to embrace different ways of understanding the world. It's a call to shift our focus from the superfluous to the substantial, from the mundane to the magnificent. Adopting this viewpoint can be transformative. It can deepen our appreciation for the universe and our place within it, fuel our curiosity, and inspire us to seek knowledge in all its forms. Einstein's words serve as a reminder that the universe is far more wondrous than our daily preoccupations often allow us to recognize. 
As we delve into the mysteries of the universe, let us remember Einstein's words and strive to see the wonder in all creation, making everything else seem superfluous. In the grand tapestry of existence, may we always find the awe-inspiring, the profound, and the beautiful. May we always remember to look beyond the superfluous and appreciate the true wonders of the universe.